All right. Today we're working on an older Craftsman mower. It's got a 24 horse Briggs in it. Um, customer said it's not running right. So he brought it to me. First thing I did, check the oil. Oil level's good. Fired it up. In fact, it sounds like it's running on half the engine. So I pulled the uh, spark plug wires off and put a spark tester on them. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. One of these right here. Super inexpensive. They're like eight bucks at Harbor Freight or at any parts store. Had fire on both sides. Went ahead and pulled the pulled the plugs out. I can get this to uh, focus. That one was warm, and that's what it looked like. This one was cold. And it's got, it's wet. So, being how this plug over here was wet, I'm going to uh, pull that valve cover off. You know what, before I do, I think I'm gonna check and see if we've got compression there. Let me set you here. Get this thing out of the way before it bites me. been working on small engines for a long time and I still do not like to get bit. Okay. Well, so we've got uh, we've got compression. So maybe we've got a valve that's not opening up all the way. Let me pull this hood off, take that valve cover off and I'll bring I'll bring you back to see it. Okay. Let me pull this valve cover off here. making a mess the one time I go and get this something to ensure that there's not gonna be a mess absolutely nothing hits the bucket well a little bit a couple drips okay well the push rods are there As soon as I pulled this uh, cover off, I noticed a couple things. First of all, it's dirty. It's real dirty. It looks like somebody's kind of halfway cared about cleaning it, but really didn't know what they were doing. However, you know, the gap between here and, and the uh, flywheel, the coil and the flywheel, uh, is ten thousandths, and that's about like the thickness of a standard business card. And this has got all the room in the world. So our gap's too big. These are not the right screws. Uh, they should look like these. So I don't know what's up with those. But uh, I'm going to loosen them, move the coil in where it needs to be, and try it again, see if that's all that it was. Unfortunately, the... Uh, the screws that, are, that whoever did this put on there are Phillips and I couldn't get them loose with a normal screwdriver so I went and got my impact driver here and just popped them loose so it appears have to go source me some some bolts out of the nut and bolt bed or something because I can't get these tight enough and that may be the problem I can't get them tight enough with a regular screwdriver that it stays there I don't think it's possible I don't know what the torque spec is on them but I know it ain't much 
Let me bring you down here, show you what I'm doing here. You've seen how loose that card was before. Now, I can't pull it out. So, what you have to do is rotate it. And it'll bring it right out. And there you go. See? It's about ten thousandths. Anyway, uh, let me get the plugs back in this thing, see if it'll fire up. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna fire this pig up. We're gonna see if uh, see if it's got both cylinders now. Boy, it doesn't sound like it. Grounding the coil out, so now we're chasing wires. Everything seems to be fine though, once we pull that kill wire off. So, oh, here's the uh, here's the diagnostic process. You just got to start and go through it. Okay, I want to show you guys what I found. Now, when you turn the key off, this. Uh, point right here just like it is right now should be showing voltage or it should be grounded which it is now which that should be showing battery voltage okay same as if you just touch the block okay now when you turn the key on like this it should not be grounded it should be open like this okay now I come down here to the plug and I check right here and I've got battery voltage which means it's grounded and the key is on. So I pull this connector apart and go into the pin on the other side, I've got nothing. I turn the key off, it should ground, there it is, I turn the key on, it should open. So this right here is correct this side is not correct so that means that this wire or one of these wires that have the diodes in them are grounded somewhere so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the pin out of the connector and pull that out and we'll take a look at it together now I've got the wire pulled off there and I've inspected it and I can't find any damage all the way across. So the only thing I can see is it's a little discolored right there. I don't know. Maybe there's something you can see the diodes in there. Let me see if I can get this to. You can see the little diodes in there right here and right here that keep them from back feeding. And I'm guessing one of them's bad. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test this with my meter to see, and I'll show you how that's done. It's super easy. A diode is essentially just a uh, electrical check valve. And most electric uh, multimeters have the ability to check diodes. Okay, so to test this diode, I put the pin out of the connector into the clamp and it runs a small amount of voltage one way or the other and you have to uh, record your voltage 
when you do it. So I grab this end, I test it here, it is 0.527. So I take my pad and I write 0.527 and then I can go ahead and test this one here before I move that. And that's 0.036. 0.036. Okay, so now we can move our clamp here and we're going to test right here. Let's just stick it in this hole here. All right, and it's showing open. That means that that one's working. It will run voltage one way, but it will not run voltage the other way. Now, we go to this one over here on the end, and we connect it, and we stick it back in the pinhole, and it's running voltage both ways, 0.036 again. So anytime a diode runs the same voltage both ways, it's not working. So the, one of these diodes is bad, and it's back feeding its brother to ground so that's why we have our issue with no uh, no fire over there. So it goes to show that even though you use one of these right here, any amount of voltage will light this thing. It, it was had it grounded in between, uh, I think what was going on was in between the electric pulses from the other side, it was grounding the right side. So what I'm going to do is I had this one laying around, this little harness that I pulled off an old junk mower. I'm going to pull the pin on it, stick it in to the other connector that's already on the mower. You know what? I'll just go ahead and test this to show the difference real quick. I'm pretty sure it's right because it ran fine when it come in here. Let me pull the pin out of here and I'll get right back with you. Okay, I've got the new wire. I got the pin end in the clamp. We're going to test this one this way. It is 0 0.546. 0 0.546. Then we'll test its brother out here on the end. It's 0 0.534, 0 0.534. Now we're going to test the voltage drop across it. So we'll take our clamp and we'll move it to the other end. And we'll try it right here. It's open. That's good. Because if it wasn't, that means it'd be letting voltage through it. So then we get our other one. We clip it in our clamp, and when we touch this, we want it to say open. And it is. It is open. So this one is a good one. Luckily, I had this thing laying around. So we'll take this. We'll put it in the harness over there. We'll connect it to the mower, and I bet you we get this thing fired up and working. Okay, we're back over here at the mower. I'm going to take this wire here, let me show you. You always want to, your little ears right here that you mash down to unpin it with, you always want to flare them back out so when you stick the pin through the connector, it, it has a nice good crisp click. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to make sure, yep, it's the round, round pin there. And it's got a good firm seat. Truth be told, I should have stuck it through the other direction. You know what? We'll just run it up here for now. And when I prove that it works, then I'll pull that pin back out and run it behind the starter the other direction. Get this thing plugged in this other coil. Alright, now, moment of truth, we're going to fire this thing up and see if it runs. Yep. 
Needs more choke. <laughs> Boy, it sure would help if I plug the harness in. <laughs> oh man. Today is the Monday, it's Wednesday I've had in a little bit. I bet she fires up now. There it is. Just a bad diode. Took a minute to get there. You guys seen my process. It's not perfect. I'm not perfect. And uh, it takes a little bit of guts to put stuff on the internet from start to finish without a bunch of takes and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull the pin out of that, shoot it behind the starter, put it back in, put this thing back together, uh, get the customer called, and they can come get it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it helped some of you. If, uh, if it did, or if you, if you enjoyed it or it helped you, please leave me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. I'm almost to 500 subscribers. I last checked, I was at like 478. Let's see if we can break 500 with this video. That'd be awesome. Anyway, you guys have a good day. God bless.